Hello and welcome everybody to our week seven of the book club. So next week is week eight and it's the last week that we have for this book. And um, Chef AJ will be our guest of honor and she will be discussing chapter six. And um, I hope that if you have written down any questions that were not answered in the book, that you will bring them next week so you can um, so you can ask Chef AJ herself. So what happens after next week? Well, the month of September, uh, it will be a month off, but not off because you will hear from me. I have a few projects that I will be sharing with you next month that I think are exciting. And one of those surprises is already in the updated website. So I encourage you to go see the website, uh, plantemus.com. And if you can find it, it's there. There is a very excited announcement there. If you can find it, uh, let me know. I think you will enjoy it. And I will be spending most of September on that project. And um, you will be able to participate. So um, if you didn't uh, see last night's webinar where I cooked the potato uh, stuffed cabbage cups. Those are absolutely divine, delicious. And it's a free webinar that I did and it's in my YouTube channel. I also threw in three other recipes actually. One of them is uh, vegetables for breakfast. The other one is a simple recipe that my mother makes. And the other one is a delicious dessert. It is peach raspberry um, filled baked apples. You will not believe how incredibly um, delicious those apples are. Finally, one, uh, the last announcement is that remember that I do offer online coaching sessions and I do also give online piano lessons. If you ever wanted to get started, I don't care if you're a beginner or intermediate or an advanced, uh, I will teach anyone who is interested. So today we are going to talk about chapter five. I hope that you read it because this is a very practical, um, very, very practical chapter on how do we eat um, healthfully anywhere other than in our homes. So some of you may not get out much and la now even less with what's going on, but some of you may. And so uh, whether it is for traveling for work or for just um, personal uh, you know, pleasure, or if it is for an event or for a get together or for a potluck, like for whatever it is, how, can you eat healthfully and not uh, be, you know, be and, and stay, I would say, and stay compliant? So very practical chapter. I have to say that um, I have a, quite a lot of experience in this area because before the pandemic, I was traveling within the United States and internationally with my uh, career as a pianist. And, um, you know, I had to figure out ways to stay committed. So if you have any questions now, um, if you have any questions, um, please write them down. My website is plant, like a plant. Then uh, e m u s dot com, and I'm typing it right here. Plantemus. That's a website that I do with doctor with the physician, Doctor Diego Poniman. And plant. The name comes from plant, from plant based, and then m u s comes from music because he's a doctor, 
a medical doctor, I'm a doctor in music. And so we put them together because the idea is to, as often as possible, share um, health or um, oriented topics and music like I did last night in the, in the cooking webinar. All right, so this is chapter five and it is on page 84. And I will be looking at the comments in case you have any questions or comments. And basically, Chef AJ says, um, the world, the outside world is not made for us as uh, plant-based eaters. And you just have to accept that it is going to be very hard, but, um, but not impossible. But it's, it's going to take some planning and thinking ahead. And of course, it's easier to stay committed outside of your home when you have stayed committed inside your home. If you have been committed for two weeks inside your home, you know, it's going to be harder to stay committed if you go to eat outside of your home. So Chef AJ um, recommends that you try very hard to, for at least three weeks, uh, don't go out of your home to parties or to restaurants to eat out, if at all possible. So at the bottom of page 80, uh, let me see here, 85, it says, um, once you have neuroadapted, you will become um, just as satisfied with a simple supper of rice, beans, and fire-roasted salsa over um, a salad greens as previously where uh, you were with a Taco Bell bean and cheese burrito. So remember that the more concentrated the source of calories, the more dopamine is released. And of course, dopamine is really um, what takes us back to the pleasure trap. Um, on page 87, Chef AJ says, St. Augustine once said, complete abstinence is easier than perfect moderation. We know that Chef AJ does not believe in moderation. Um, I don't think it works for addiction. Uh, just, you know, food addiction, we, we, you know, it's pretty, you know, we could compare it to pretty much any other addiction. You couldn't tell uh, someone who is battling with alcohol and got into rehab to be moderate and instead of drinking, you know, three bottles of wine a day to just eat, drink half or one little glass. It's, it's it, that moderation doesn't work when you have an addiction. So, um, she just says it's better complete abstinence. The other problem with staying off your plan is this. Once you have abstained from the hyper palatable foods that have become your drug of choice for a prolonged period of time, it takes a smaller dose to get an even more pronounced effect. So think about this. Once you have abstained for a while and, and your palate has uh, been uh, accustomed to less um, hyper palatable foods, if you get off and you try one of those foods, you're going to get a bigger kick. So you actually now get a bigger blast of dopamine from a much smaller amount of the substance. The feeling is much more intense than you remember, and now you really can't get enough. So in her insightful book, The Hunger Fix, Dr. Pamela Peek says, we now know that when we awaken the sleeping dragon of addiction, it becomes stronger, more powerful, and twice as deadly as before. So you just have to become very vigilant, Chef AJ says. Uh, be... Um, very vid, vid, uh, vigilant when you eat outside your home because most of your friends and family members have probably been your 
pushers for years, they will constantly try to entice you with their tempting treats, saying things like, oh, come on, one bite won't hurt. I know you have all heard that. I mean, I still hear that. Or all things in moderation, one bite can kill and moderation has never, ever worked for an addict. The only thing that has ever worked is abstinence before eating something that may send you on a downward spiral. Ask yourself, will it be worth it? Will you be able to recover quickly and easily and get right back on the program with the very next meal? If the answer is no, then consider all your other options, including skipping a meal. Now, on page 88, Chef AJ talks about three kinds of um, category of eating outside of your home. Let's see here some of the comments. Chef AJ states in the book that you are either eating for your recovery or your addiction. I am going to try to keep that in mind when I am tempted to go off plan. Yes, and when someone says, yes, just eat wine, it's just a treat. This, um, this sentence here on page 86 that Chef AJ writes in the second paragraph says, while you may feel that it's extreme to avoid treats entirely, Consider that having a slender, healthy body is the real treat. So what are the three categories of eating outside, okay, of events? So you have situations where you have complete control of your food, situations where you have some or partial control over your food, and situations where you have no control over your food. The solution is to set yourself up for success by, by creating as many outside eating situations as possible where you can have complete control over your food intake. So whether you're traveling by automobile, bicycle, bus, foot, plane, train, you're allowed to bring food with you. Um, I still meet people that don't know this, but yes, you are. Even in planes, you're allowed to take food with you. So when arriving at your destination, be it a hotel or someone's home, if you have a refrigerator and are allowed to prepare your own meals, then you have complete control. So, an example of a situation where you have some control would be a restaurant. Navigate the menu to find suitable choices, and I will give you some tips on how to do this, she says. And then the most difficult situations are those in which you have no control over the food served. Examples would be a large event, like a wedding or a bar mitzvah or a host who refuses to make accommodations for your special dietary needs. I try to avoid these situations and people like the uh, and people and people <laughs> like the plague. And if I can't, I make sure that I pre-eat something extremely healthy and very filling, like a sweet potato, before I go and have a compliant food with me in my cooler in the car. One of the things that all outside eating scenarios have in common is that they all require some degree of planning. And with the exception of not being able to bring liquids onto an airplane, unless you purchase them after going through the TSA, you really can bring almost any other food you want on board. You can even bring an ice chip to keep your food cold so long as it's frozen solid and you take it out of your bag so that TSA can see it and when it goes through the x-ray machine. 
You can also use frozen foods like bags of frozen fruits and vegetables or entrees you froze ahead of time to keep your food cold and you can actually eat them when you arrive at your destination. I will always, I always bring at least 24 hours worth of food with me wherever I travel. She says, in my cooler bag, I always take several cooked potatoes or sweet potatoes and raw vegetables like sugar snaps, um, snap peas or baby carrots and some blueberry mill oat muffins that you have here in the book on page 140. I also carry non-perishable food with me in my backpack, such as fruit like apples, bananas, and oranges. I may also take some um, non-perishable snacks like freeze-dried apple chips or dried bananas. They're made from just fruit. Hummus seems to be a gray area if it is spread on a wrap, TSA may let it go through, where in a container, they often confiscate it. And yes, it happened to me. One time they let it go, one time they didn't. So sometimes you can dehydrate the hummus if you wanna go through all that trouble and then you can add water whenever you get to your destination. Occasionally, I will buy food at airports. You can get plain steel-cut oatmeal made with water at Starbucks. Yes, I've done this many times. There is a Starbucks in almost any airport. And of course, if you're on the road in a car, there are sometimes, many times, they're on the side of the roads. So they actually have something compliant. You can buy uh, steel-cut oats. Um, made with water, then you can sometimes, most of the times they sell fruit there. You can buy a banana or whatever, you buy, put it in there. And, um, and that can be a lifesaver. <laughs> so what else? Um, another place where you can eat, uh, get by, let's say, it's at a Wendy's. That's a fast food chain. Uh, there are Wendy's in airports. Uh, I have being at the San Francisco airport where the first thing I do when I get off the plane is I go to Wendy's and I buy myself usually two baked plain, get plain, plain baked potatoes. And uh, they have they usually have um, pepper and that's it. And if they have lemon, I ask for lemon. And that will be, you know, it. They also sell side salads. Um, the only problem is that you would have to eat it dry unless you just put lemon juice, if they have lemon juice there. But um, that's something that you can, uh, you know, count on. And of course, when you are going to, that you know that you're going to go through an airport, you can Google that airport and see what restaurants they have in that restaurant so that you are prepared. So all of this takes some, um, the, the, you know, takes some some planning. The steel cut oats at Starbucks will not be organic. But yes, okay. You know, when you when you're hungry and you have the choice of, well, I'm just gonna eat a croissant or a, or who knows what. Uh, at a McDonald's, this is the healthiest option. I'm not saying now to go to a Starbucks every day and get that. This is for emergency purposes only if you cannot. But of course, you can always carry in Zipper Lock bags uh, your oatmeal. And all you have to do is um, carry with you uh, some kind of a, or, or buy a cup and, and add hot water. All right, um, what about in a hotel? Well, Chef AJ says, um, you know, uh, always, if it's possible, make sure you get a room that has a refrigerator. And um, she says that I told a little white lie 
that I was on a medication that needed refrigeration and asked them to please store it for me and said that I would come down a few times a day to get it. Next thing you know, a mini fridge was sent up to my room. I find it's best to call the hotel in advance to make this request. And I agree with that. Uh, let's see um, what else. Many airports have a Chinese fast food where you can get rice. Not perfect, but like Gustav is saying now, it might be the best choice available. In these uh, Chinese fast food restaurants, sometimes, believe it or not, you can get steamed rice and you have to be very specific and say, is it just, is it steamed with water and do you add oil? Now, unfortunately, because the craziness of oil is just insane, it makes me so aggravated that I have to ask that question all the time, all the time, because oil is everywhere. So you have to say, uh, do you have steamed rice and do you put oil? Okay, so please don't put oil. If they say, no, it doesn't have oil, well, please don't put any oil. And can I have steamed veggies? Yes, but please don't put oil because I promise you they will many times go ahead and put it in there. So in many of these places, you can get plain steamed rice and plain steamed veggies. Yes, it's not the most gourmet, delicious meal, but in, in that, again, this is all for emergencies, okay? Uh, if you're hungry and your choice is to go there or to go to a McDonald's and get a cheeseburger, which of course I wouldn't do even if I was, uh, I, I know I'm not going to die even if I didn't eat for a month. You know, I've seen people at True North Health Center don't eat for, well, I myself have done it, but you know, a few, just a few days. You're not, we're not going to die if we, don't, if we don't eat one meal. So you might want to skip it, but if not, these are things that you can do as, like I said, as um, something to, to get by. Um, one of the most frequent questions I get asked is how to eat healthfully in restaurants. So here are some tips that I have used over the years. Whether at a restaurant or someone else's home, this is the big advice. I say this all the time. I do it. The other day I did a Facebook Live where I was telling everyone that I was going to a birthday party and I was eating two big bowls of rice and veggies that I made here at home. And so I went to this party totally full. And I, that way I'm not going to be feel deprived if I don't eat uh, something you know else. So eat before you go. Eat before you go. If you aren't starving when you get to the restaurant, you're less likely to make poor choices. Then if all you can get is a dry salad, you won't feel as deprived. There, you know, there is a, an app called happycow.net. Well, it's a website, actually. Or even Yelp or even TripAdvisor where you can see where they have vegan restaurants. But like Chef AJ says here, vegan restaurants, unfortunately, sometimes are the least healthy choices. You have to read and you have to ask. You have to read the menu very carefully because they are vegan, but they put all this uh, processed, uh, you know, junk, and of course they will put oil. So you have to read, and then if it's not clear, you have to ask. Like Chef AJ's here, I prefer to go to a steakhouse because I know that 99% of the times they're going to have a baked potato or baked sweet potatoes. Um, I often, I can't remember the name of this steakhouse in Texas. Uh, I think it's Outback, uh, but there is another one um, anyway. Um, and I get a baked potato and a baked sweet potato dry. 
and then um, a side salad. And I, in a few times, I think I've seen a oil-free dressing. And if not, you can discreetly take out your little bottle with your, um, you know, compliant salad dressing and just put it there. Another idea that AJ has, let's see, you know, calling the restaurant, of course, is, is uh, when they're off peak hours, it's a really good idea to just ask, just tell them that, that you have certain limitations for doctor's orders, you're in a special program, and if they get, this is what you can eat, I can eat legumes, I can eat, eat all vegetables and fruits and uh, grains, I just don't eat any oil or dairy or any meat. Um, and so she says, I wrote on a piece of paper that I could eat any fruit, vegetable, whole grain or legume and could not eat any sugar, oil or salt. And I thank the chef for their ingenuity um, because the chef sometimes, it's happened to me, uh, sometimes the food that comes to the table, it looks so much better than the food of the other people that are eating the sad diet that they all actually are making comments about how they wish they had ordered that. Of course, that wasn't in the menu because the chef created it. On page 94, Chef AJ says, and if you know her, you know how funny she is. And that to get to be able to stay compliant, she will do pretty much anything. So she says, I often have to fib and say that I am allergic to oil to be absolutely sure that I don't get any in my food. At many Asian restaurants, when I've said no oil, they interpreted it that that means less oil, not no oil. In general, at ethnic restaurants, um, it's usually fairly easy to get steamed vegetables and brown rice. I find it's often less challenging eating at restaurants than other people's homes because the server doesn't take it personally. On page, let's see what page this is, 96, Chef AJ says, Eating, eating at other people's homes, especially if they don't eat in the same healthful manner as you do, can be extremely challenging, to say the least. Navigating social situations when you don't want to offend other people yet want to remain true to your own healthy eating plan can be difficult indeed. So here are some strategies that I have used in the past. The first thing I do when invited to someone else's home for a meal, whether I know them well or not, is to ask if I can bring a dish to share. And I make it sound as specific and enticing as possible. Like, hey, could I bring something to share? I can bring my bodacious beet salad with barefoot dressing. Um, if the host says yes, I'm home free. If the host says no, then I will say that either I have a severe food allergy or I am on a very special diet, doctor's orders, and would then mind my bringing my own food just for me. In the rare case that they say no to that, then I either won't go or I will pre-eat and push the food around on my plate, eating any compliant food when I get there. If the host is willing to make something special for me, then I will ask for something really simple, like a plain baked potato, so they don't have to go to too much trouble. If it is a potluck, well, then you are in luck. You can bring anything you want, as much as you want. <clears throat> Someone wrote here, there was a new restaurant by mistake uh, and I thought I was going in the door to doctor office. Talk with a person and upfront told them what my food style was. They got the menu and reviewed what they had for me. In addition, they were farm to table. They went out their way and I did go back. Okay. 
you know, sometimes you get really good surprises at restaurants and when they're not willing, you know, you don't, you can still be polite and say, thank you and, and, and leave, you know, but many times they really will surprise you. One thing that uh, AJ talks about on page 96 is that sometimes when, um, when she has been to places where there's nothing that she could eat, she has actually excused herself uh, and gone out to her car to eat something. I know because I've been with her many times and she does carry uh, food or and or drinks in her car. And, um, you know, like she says here, she left uh, her phone on purpose in the car. And so in the party, she said, oh, excuse me, I need to go to my car. I left my phone. So she goes to the car and has a little snack and eats, gets her phone and goes back in. You know, that's um, that's a smooth way to eat something and um, and be polite. Places like amusement parks, business conferences, courthouses, fairs, hospitals, malls, movie theaters, museums, and sporting events, to name a f uh, just a few, um, it's very difficult, if not impossible, to find healthy food. In those situations, just pre-eat, and, um, and if you can, carry a cooler with you, but it's just going to be difficult, just, just know that. One thing that I also mentioned, and she mentions it here in page 97, is that sometimes we connect too much events with food because I guess in our uh, childhood, everything is, is connected. Okay, let's get together for a birthday and make, and make, you know, and, and every, an event has to revolve around food when in fact um, when we go to a wedding and when we go to a birthday party and when we go to whatever we're going for that event and to be around those people and to share the moment more than uh, more than the food she talks about on page 97 to be aware of what she calls food bullies I know it's hard to believe that anyone would intentionally thwart your weight loss efforts and health goals, but trust me, they are out there, and you may even be living with one of them. All bullies are motivated by fear, and if, you're, and if our friends and loved ones are not joining us in getting healthy, they may, consciously or unconsciously, try to derail us because they fear if we get healthy, we may leave them behind. It's sad to say, but some of them are acting out of jealousy, especially if you start losing weight and they remain overweight. On page 98, at the very bottom, it says, if you are the only one in your family eating this way and you will have uh, to prepare unhealthy food for them. This can be excruciatingly difficult, if not impossible, to accomplish without relapsing. And yes, this happens. This happens when uh, someone is following the program, but they're living with uh, family and they have to cook unhealthy food for them. Chef AJ is ex says that it is excruciating and that it is so, so difficult to do. So remember the golden rule. If it's in your house, it's in your mouth. It's not a matter of uh, if it will happen. It's a matter of when. I recommend preparing healthy food and offering your loved ones two choices. <laughs> I like this. Um, that's pretty much what I did when I switched. I cooked entirely this way, and just there were two choices. Take it or leave it, you know. Take it or leave it. If you want to eat something unhealthy, it's okay. Just eat it somewhere where I can't see you outside of the house, and 
if you want to eat inside, then there's this food here. Um, now that you know that the healthiest way is, you know, to eat is this, and it is true. Now, now that you know how how food affects our health, mental and physical, how can you possibly feed the most cherished ones in your life? food that will promote disease and you know it basically you know that you are killing them so if they want to eat that she says crap outside the home you may not be able to stop them but why do you have to be their ex execution executioner okay so uh, here is another thing that uh, the last thing I think I wanted to mention. Um, I don't know where it is. You will find, I know that you have read it and I'm going to end with this here, is restaurants where you can call ahead of time and ask them pol very politely always, of course, in a very charming way. You can ask them, I am on a special diet by doctor's orders. It is extremely important that I eat compliant food. May I bring my entree to the restaurant a few minutes ahead of time and have you um, put it, plate it, put it in a plate or warm it up and just bring it to me uh, when I'm with the other people and um, like I've ordered it, it's like I have ordered a special entree and you say, and I don't mind paying the price of an entree and believe it or not, there are restaurants that will do this and some restaurants will charge you the price of the least expensive entree and they will come to your table with this wonderful plate that you made and the people again in your table will probably be jealous that you're eating that and they're eating their disease promoting lunch or dinner. So that's another option. Uh, the last page of this chapter, which is on page 100 says, you know you have truly succeeded on the ultimate weight loss program when home is your very favorite place to eat because when it comes to delicious, healthy, and compliant foods, Dorothy was right. There truly is no place like home. And I have to say that that's exactly how I feel. I feel safe at home, and I feel that the food that is prepared here by me is um, always... Uh, delicious and compliant and um, when I go outside it's always a little bit of an unnerving situation and I try to avoid it. So let me see. Um, yes, you can, you, you know, uh, everything becomes possible with practice. You can even, um, you know, talk with an accent and ask your Sava to bring you, you know, um, just be polite, just be charming. Um, if you can, uh, always in a very soft and nice voice. Very good. Well, as usual, this has been a wonderful time with you, with all of you. I've enjoyed it so much. Everybody, have fun. Stay compliant this week, and um, I will see you next Sunday with Chef AJ. And this coming Wednesday is my second interview with the fashionista lawyer that I met a few weeks ago who is hysterical. She is funny. She is sharp, intelligent, goal-getter, and... Um, the interview that I did last week was great with her. She had so many good ideas for dressing. Um, and next Wednesday, she will talk about um, another interesting topic, and which is how to dress to look younger, of course, without 
uh, and, and still being um, fashionable. And uh, that video with that interview is going to go up either later tonight or tomorrow in my YouTube channel. Watch it. You're going to like it a lot, I know. And then uh, you will receive a link for to register. This is a free webinar to register for this Wednesday's webinar with her. Goodbye, everybody. And uh, I enjoyed very much our time together. Next week, remember, bring your questions for Chef AJ. Bye-bye.